Uh, regarding your process of embedding with the battle company, Andrew. how long did it take for you guys to kind of gain the trust of the unit? Were you there through their six month prep before deployment, or did you join them on deployment? How did that work out? Yeah, the amount of time we spent with them. Um, well, obviously, you know, the US military has a system to embed reporters with units, and um, we went to the Congo kind of not by chance, but Sebastian met our company in uh, southern Afghanistan in 2005 in <coughs> province. And um, so when we, when we decided we want to go with the platoon for a year, so back the company we deployed to Congo, so we asked to go with them. And obviously, when you first turn up, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, all the soldiers know so there's a prickly relationship between the, the ministry and the press. You know, soldiers themselves keep a distance from, from reporters. And so we were no different, we turned up. But we were up a, when we got to Restrepo, we just started building it. Uh, so um, it was a pretty, you know, uh, I mean, there's no running water or electricity. There was no, you know, it was just MREs and ammo and guns and nothing else. And uh, sleeping out in the open, surrounded by Nesco's, pretty on the side of that, that mountain. There's no fun kind of, there's no hooches there or anything. So, um, and we just, we just spent, spent, spent the time where we did everything the soldiers did. I mean, we just, we went on every patrol, we went into every combat situation. I mean, I didn't carry a weapon, we didn't carry a weapon, we didn't pull guard duty or location, they'd wake up in the night and see if we'd fall for that. And uh, <laughs> so, after a while of, of doing that, and you know, we came, in the end, actually, we spent, we filmed, we had 10 months of filming into, the, into this, five months each, but sometimes to get some of apart. You know, we, we both got injured out there, so it was a kind of, we, in the end, we were like a tag team. Uh, you know, and, but after a while, I think the guys, after the third trip, they saw we were willing to go to the first extremes. And, and you know, I, I, you know, you're saying you're a question about getting war reporting. Like I, my, I got into war reporting by chance, and eventually I was in West Africa when I got into it. And I was embedded with rebel armies in Liberia, and I just felt in reporting that when you, when you give, let go of the experience and go to the absolute, you just say, okay, I'm going to go the whole way. That you kind of emotionally open yourself up to that experience, which is what you do as a soldier. You've signed on, you've taken that oath, and that's what you do. You know you're there the whole war. I think as a reporter when you do that, that that transfers somehow to the audience. And so I think that the soldiers got a sense that we were just willing to do that. Not like in a crazy way, like, oh, you know, I'm going to, I want to get shot, but just as a way as like, okay, I'm going to do everything that you do. I'll go the whole way, obviously apart from carrying a gun, so missing out on that pretty essential element of war. Like I didn't, I didn't shoot a gun, so I, wasn't, I didn't kill anybody in that way. So I don't understand that, that experience per se. But I mean, uh, you know, was, you know, being on the front lines of the absolute. And I think that that just kind of gained, we became part of the platoon, which was one of the most profound experiences for us. Um, yeah, we, we, did, um, we did five one month trips each. Uh, so we came and went, which actually was in some ways more complicated emotionally than I think just going out there and staying. But that shift in reality from Estrepo to Dubai, I mean, at one time I left there after a combat operation, and, and I just got lucky with the helicopters, and I was in Dubai about 12 hours later, and I was still covered in dust, you know, from my hilltop I'd been on. And I was in New York, you know, like 18 hours after that. And that was really hard. I was dreading going back out there. And then when I got out there, I, I didn't really want to leave. Like, the, the place we found her, the place that we acquired in that platoon, in some ways, as dangerous as it, and hard as it was out there, I'd never been part of a group before, you know? And this isn't a group like a football team, which is a group for two hours a day when you're training or whatever. This is 24 hours a day for 15 months. I'd never been part of that. And um, it really got a hold on me, and I missed it. I still miss it. And I came back with nightmares and the rest of it, but I still miss it. And um, I, I think at that point when that's the story started to get a hold on us like that. I think maybe even unconsciously, the soldiers also understood that that was happening to us, and that we were kind of, we kind of shifted over a little bit from being just occasional visitors to someone, people that they accepted and recognized. Um, and by the end, I mean, I think I made lifelong friends. Uh, I mean, I'm much older than all those guys, but I think I made lifelong friends out there. Um.